it will make come uh, the other. Yeah. I think now it's fine, right? We can start. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, speakers, participants, very good morning. For the ones from the western side of Indian Ocean and good afternoon for the ones from the eastern side of the Indian Ocean. First of all, allow me to confi convey my deep appreciation and extend my warm welcome to all the distinguished participants present here for the webinar on the strengthening regional safety standard and quality. Assurance of aquaculture product in the Ayura region organized by the Ayura Secretariat with the technical assistance of Coffer Fresh. According to the FAO, the fisheries and aquaculture sector provides more than 40.3 billion people with about 15% of their animal protein intake. Fisheries and aquaculture are also source of income for 55 million people. Seafood, as the world's largest traded food commodity, provides sustenance to billions of people worldwide. Thus, the fishery sector plays an important role in contributing to food security, poverty alleviation, job creation, and also represent huge business opportunities. Several sectors, including the way fish is handled, processed, preserved, and stored, affect the nutritive value of fish products. Food safety and quality is a major, major concern facing the food industry today, with consumers requiring safer and high-quality products. Therefore, a better understanding of how to improve seafood safety and quality is of great importance. Ayura recognized the importance of the fisheries and aquaculture sector, which is one of the most focused in Ayura Blue Economy agenda. Since the introduction of the blue economy in Ayura, member states and dollar partners are committed to make this sector a driver for socio-economic development. With the establishment of working group of, on the blue economy and the adoption on its work plan, more and more projects are being undertaken by member and dollar partners. In addition for the sustainable development of fisheries sector in Ayura, the core group on fisheries management, which is being led by Indonesia, provides a coordinated mechanism for engaging relevant fisheries management stakeholders across member states, which will not only pave the way for sustainable fisheries management in the Ayura region, but also ensure the conservation and sustainable use of marine resources, as well as enhance the capacity of member states in the protection and the preservation of the coastal and marine environment. The Ayura Fisheries Support Unit, which is one of the specialized agencies of Ayura, also plays an important role in this initiative. In fact, the FSU noted, hosted the workshop on the seafood product safety and quality on 6 to 10 November 2016 that aimed at enhancing knowledge on local and international regulation and regulation related to seafood safety and quality. I'm confident that this webinar will provide insightful information that will help IRA member states to better understand the aspect of seafood safety and quality assurances as well as international standards and requirements and international certification. I again wish to express my sincere appreciation to your participation to this webinar. I thank you. I would like to give the floor to Aubrey. Please, Aubrey. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gunawan. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the I.O. region. My name is Aubrey Harris, and I'm the main resident expert of a project, the IORA AFD. That's for Agence France pour le Développement. The project, a technical assistance project on fisheries, aquaculture, and the marine environment. The project is focused on assisting in the implementation of the IORA action plan, working through the um, work plan of the 
working group for the bleed economy and in due course of course the work plan of the cluster group for fisheries management now since this project started it started in may last year it, it has been undertaking a number of reviews uh, reviews across the Iora region in those areas, fisheries and aquaculture. And that is because, of course, because we all know of the situation at the moment. It has not been possible to travel. And we've uh, now accomplished several of these reviews and we have passed them to the Secretariat and they'll be coming through to member countries. Um, these reviews uh, give a status of what is going on. In support of the action plan, for example, we've looked at stock assessment training courses across the Iori region. There's been a literature review and gap analysis of international trade and markets for fisheries and aquaculture prod products across the region. There has been a review of aquaculture and in, with special emphasis on small scale aquaculture, which was done by Pierre Philippe, who you will hear of more later. And more recently, we've looked at the existing capacity and needs of Iora member states to implement their port state measures in the Iora region, and also an analysis of the measures to combat illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing in the Iowa region. These uh, are all being circulated and in due course, I hope you all have the occasion to see them. The subject matter that we have today, uh, safety standards and quality assurance of agriculture projects in the Iowa region. Uh, this was planned to be as a workshop but because of the situation that we are in, we are having it as a webinar. Uh, we have with us uh, an excellent team that's present today. Um, the, the subject will be introduced and led by Pierre-Philippe Blanc, who is an aquaculture and, um, aquaculture and, and development expert. Um, who is part of our technical team, the, the Iora AFD Co-Profesh te Technical Team. He will uh, bring in an introduction and also um, cover some of the other aspects of the presentations which will take place. We are also, well, this, he will be followed by Peter Saul Rogers, Peter is a consultant in trade and development, value chain upgrading and investor facilitation. He will be looking at food safety and quality assurance aspects to comply with for export and bring in his valuable experience. Next, we will have a couple of presentations from, from countries in the Iowa that are involved in aquaculture. Dr. Domitila Kiwile Muendo who is the center director of the CAMFRI, the Kenya Marine Fisheries Research Institute in Kenya. She will be looking at the situation of food safety and quality assurance in Kenya. Now, Kenya is one of those emerging aquaculture countries that those are the smaller countries that are engaged in aquaculture with a lot of potential and uh, able to make their way uh, to greater production. Um, then we will be followed by uh, Dr. T.V. Sankar, who's a principal scientist in the Central Institute of Tech Fisheries Technology of the Government of India. Dr. Sankar will cover the safety standards and present a discussion of the Indian experience. To be noted, of course, is that India is the second largest country in this region that is uh, an aquaculture producer and produces in fact more from aquaculture than it does from, from uh, captured fisheries. But enough of that because you will see it all later. Um, now, after, after the presentations, um, there'll be 
some questions and answers. You are welcome to um, ask questions and bring in your perspective. There will be also some questions sent to you, and more of this will be will be provided by Pierre Philippe. But we are looking to make it uh, informative, useful, interactive, and to see that you get some benefits in terms of the areas that you are interested in, food safety and quality control. So with those few words, I shall pass over to Pierre Philippe, who will continue and give you the overview of the meeting and subject. Please, uh, Pierre Philippe. Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you for, for being here. So what I propose is to start right away. Uh, I will start by a, a general presentation of uh, the different speaker and the different presentation. And after, uh, uh, I, will, um, I will move directly to the to, uh, general presentation. So um, just, yes. Please. So yes, welcome, welcome. So uh, as uh, as presented by uh, by uh, Aubrey, uh, they will have four presentations. So here are the four speakers. So myself, Pierre Philippe Blanc. Uh, I'm an international agriculture expert, and I'm working here. Yes, for the FD, IFD. Uh, technical assistant to Yora and uh, on this project uh, implemented by Cofrepesh and Sofreco. Uh, on the second presentation, we will have uh, Dr. Domitilia Coulier Muendo uh, from Kenya. Uh, she's the uh, Center Director of Kenya Marine and Fishery Research Institute, mainly working on, uh, on uh, aquaculture. And uh, and uh, yes, yeah, she's working for the government of Kenya. And uh, so this will be the third, the third uh, lecture, I, because it's an alphabetic order, that's why. Um, Peter Rogesal will do the, the second uh, presentation. He's a consultant in trade and development value chain uh, upgrading, investor uh, facilitation. So he will mainly present the private sector, the, the, the food safety issue on the side of the private sector that will give a, a, good, uh, a good counterpart on the, on the other presentation. And Dr. Sankar, Sankar from India, he's the principal uh, scientist on, um, on um, uh, uh, a principal scientist, he's working for the ICA, the Center Institute of Fishery Technology for the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare for the Government of India. So these are the, uh, the different, uh, different presentations that are planned. And the objective of uh, this webinar is, uh, as say Aubrey, to be informative, useful, because you are most of you, you are specialists working in a food safety. So it's to to bring a, a, an overview, to bring some uh, some uh, case study from uh, other part of the world. So uh, to give also illustration of what happened in food safety and uh, the different aspects. And um, this uh, webinar also uh, will try to be interactive. So we are going to ask you to. Uh, to answer some questions, to participate, and to give your input for us uh, and um, for, uh, the, for the, the future activity that can be done on food safety. So if we, if we, so as I say, there we have four presentations. The first one, general presentation, aquaculture food safety. The second presentation, uh, more on the, by Peter Sir Roger than a food safety and quality aspect, uh, the comply for export. The third presentation will be a detailed case study from, in, uh, from Kenya market. And the, the, the last one, a general discussion uh, about the issue through India experience. Just to, to give some general rule about uh, the webinar, if it's possible to turn off your webcam, your camera during the presentation, so like this, uh, you will have directly the, 
the the present uh, uh, and the different uh, the the different uh, speaker that uh, that will be, will appear and uh, not to distract uh, also, if it's possible to wait your turn to not uh, to to use the hand raising icon if you have a question, if you want to to interview, or you can use the chat. Also, we are looking at the chat, so uh, we will take in account everything uh, written. Uh, they will have a question and answer uh, session, so we are going to ask you to write the question in the chat. Or, uh, or to to present them directly. We just ask you if it's possible to be to be short to go straight to the point. We are available for whatever discussion, but after the webinar. So we want uh, really to to get the opportunity to have the maximum question and to bring the maximum answer. And uh, my my last request for general rule for the webinar: if it's possible not to use the chat room for conversation, but for matter link with the with the webinar so um, just sorry so just to just to start from here uh, i need to yes I will uh, I will start uh, directly uh, with uh, two uh, questions. Some question. So we are going to use um, to use uh, a program. So uh, it uh, just I need your participation. So I hope on your particip uh, participation on this. Um, we are going to use uh, a program for. Um, just to collect some information because we made the introduction on our side and we would like to have some uh, feedback on your side so i'm going to share the screen um here is it so we're going to use a program called mentimeter maybe some of you already know it so I will ask you to uh, to go on the to open uh, on your phone or on your computer, both of them, to open the page www.menti.com. So we are going to put this on the chat. Here is it. I'm going to put to no all. Okay. I think you you can click on it. It will bring you to a page that will ask you for a code. And this code will be on the next slide. So let me open. So the code will be 866. You can copy. I put it on the chat also. So thank you, uh, Philippe. Yes, uh, it's good. Good for us to get soon into the presentations. As uh, okay, moving on, eh? Okay. Okay, so we can move on the presentation, or you, or we can have a try for this. Yes. Are you going? Are you going to send a link? To the participants for them all the all the link is already in the chat the code and the link good, it's good. In the chat. okay so so participants look at your chat there will be a link there please click that link there are a number of questions that you you we would like you to enter respond to it'll give us an idea of where you would like to go uh, what you Feel of this exactly we need to just for you to have a general like presentation in the future okay please Pierre Philippe could you start please yes I'm I'm starting so I let you fill this one and um, let's start the, the presentation
So, do you have, oh, sorry, I need to share the, so here is the presentation. Um, so aquaculture, food safety and quality insurance aspects and control for aquaculture development in your region. So this is the first presentation. I will, uh, I will start uh, quickly by an overview of uh, Iora, Iora uh, country. So Iora is 22 countries in the association and they are not, uh, in aquaculture, they're not, uh, all those countries together, they're not small players. They are representing 70% of world aquaculture. We have three members of Iora that uh, have more aquaculture production than capture production. And we have more than one third of the member that uh, present aquaculture production. Uh, aquaculture production represents more than 30% of uh, the total fishery aquaculture plus uh, capture. So you have a you have a map on the on the corner, and uh, this is the Indian Ocean. The in the yellow you have. Uh, some of the biggest producers in aquaculture and all the yellow one they are member except uh, vietnam they are member of uh, of iora iora country the aquaculture production from iora country went from 4.6 million tons in 2000 to 26 million tons in 2018 it have doubled every five years since the uh, late uh, 1980s. So it's a very dynamic sector. And uh, the higher growth in aquaculture are within the IRA country. Um, so if we, if we uh, look, aquaculture is a good, it's a, it's a very active sector. And one of the issues of aquaculture, and this is why we are here, is the food safety and quality insurance aspect. So Food safety, what is it? With food, food safety, uh, sorry. Food safety refer to all the practice and, uh, and the condition uh, to preserve food quality, to prevent contamination. The objective of food safety is to avoid all the hazards that will have an impact on the consumer. So food should be safe for human consumption and free from hazard and it should not compromise the health of the consumer. And we are going to talk also about quality insurance. And what is quality insurance, QA? It's all the activity that ensure that the process and the different step uh, that produce uh, this final uh, finished product meet the standard and the specification. So the goal of the quality insurance is to be sure that the food is safe and quality and uh, so food safety and food quality are two different things. Food quality is the uh, general value of the food. Food safety, it's uh, all the health aspect. If we look at the diagram here, food safety management, um, we, they are include the quality insurance. So it's composed by, we will have, uh, uh, we will see this more in detail all the good ma management practices, all the good hygiene practices, all the SSOP, uh, the, the procedure and the prerequisites that are needed to guarantee that the process is safe. And when we talk about process is production, harvest, all the, um, the, the process to prepare, to pack and uh, or to transform the, the the, the product, the transport, the storage, in fact, all the value chain. And quality insurance will be more, will englobe this food safety management and will, will, uh, will uh, take in account also some food quality issue. So we have a lot of quality insurance we will have 
Uh, here it's an example, ISO 9000, we can put ISO 22000, ISO 14000. There is a lot of private one and um, that will go. And we can go on more bigger than quality insurance is all the quality management, all the managerial uh, strategy that can envelop everything. So this it's a, it's a diagram from uh, from uh, Juve and, uh, and Al in uh, made in 1998 and is still actual. What is the food safety? Food safety cover the food hazard. So the food hazard, we have three big categories. The biological one, the chemical one, and the physical one. So the biological one will regroup everything produced by bacteria, viruses, parasites, and all the possible biological toxin that can be in your um, aquaculture product. The chemical one, it's all the environmental contaminant that we add intentionally or by mistake. And the physical one, the last one, it's all the uh, physical element that can, uh, that can have an adverse health effect that you, we can find in the product. So it's metal, glass, bone, a piece of shell, uh, uh, the list is, and the list can be very long. So we are going to look quickly at each of them. On the biological hazard, so bacteria, bacterial toxin, viruses, parasites, and other toxins, the, the big player is bacteria, but it's not the only one. So when bacteria, you will have a lot of bacteria that can grow, develop in your, uh, in your product, and that can have an impact on the health for the consumer. So most of them, you know them, Salmonella, Ericia coli, a number of vibrios, which is uh, the, the cholerae, paramoticus, vinificus, uh, all the staphylococcus, Clostridium prefer perfringens, which has uh, the, when uh, you, you break uh, the cold chain, the Listeria, Pompilapter, so a lot of bacteria can cause food poisoning outbreak. It's it is caused by different uh, different uh, vector. It can come directly with the product, with dirty water, with dirty uh, dirty condition, or uh, all the cleaning and sanitation of equipment. It can be cross contamination during the process, during the harvest, during the transport, during the storage. Uh, all the all the different uh, process uh, stage, but most of the time. Even this, one, one factor that really increase the, the quantity of bacteria will be all the management of the time temperature. When the, at the moment uh, the, of the harvest, uh, the product will have to follow a cold chain. And this cold chain will be one of the main guarantee, for sure, there is all the, uh, the hygiene issue and the cross-contamination, but the cold chain will, will be one of the main, the main uh, point to, uh, to control, to avoid the development of bacteria, even if there is some to keep it at low level. Virus, viruses and parasites. So there is some viruses that uh, can uh, cause food poisoning. Uh, but uh, we are going to, and there is also some parasites uh, uh, such as uh, trematode, cespod, and nematode that have to be considered and that have to be uh, to be uh, sorry to be uh, to be taken it into account to have a safe uh, final product and the other one which is biological which has not the minimal because when we are talking about uh, selfish uh, they are really concerned about this all the the animal that filter it's all the poisoning by uh, microalgae by uh, by toxin so if we talk about the fish reproduct, we will have a lot of toxin coming from uh, microscopic algae, but 
that you can find on uh, selfish, but you can find also on fish like uh, ciguatera or histamine. So this is the general review of the biotech, biotech, uh, bacteriological hazard, and you have the chemical one. The chemical one, it's all the pollution of the water, all the environmental contaminants that can be on the product, that can go with the product until the final product, and that can have an impact. So you will have all the category of heavy metal that can, can be in the environment or can, uh, can be a, a mistake during uh, the farming process or during the process. So uh, the, the worst one are sure are lead, arsenic, bromate, dioxin, dioxide, mercury, and cetera. But uh, uh, they, they can have in the environment uh, a, a, a level of uh, heavy metal that can be a, a threat for aquaculture uh, production. And also all the contamination from outside the farm or inside the farm. So you have the pesticide, the herbicide, the insecticide, the fungicide, the algicide, in fact, all the side, uh, which are not good with the product, which are not good for the health. You, there is spe special care on the product you manage during the production of aquaculture and during the process, which is chemical fertilizer, the, the, all the product, the chemical product for pond, pond bottom treatment, all the additive for feed, all the additive for the process uh, that you put for the conservation, for the organoleptic, the, the antioxidant, so uh, metabisulfide, for example, for shrimp. But, and there is one which is a bit big uh, stress for aquaculture because in the past there was uh, a lot of issue on this. It's uh, the veterinary treatment that are used during the production, during the hatchery, or that can be mixed with some feed. So uh, this issue is, uh, is worse when uh, it's uh, the use of forbidden product in some country, like uh, chlorophenicol, nitrofuran, malachite green, crystal violet, which are forbidden one. We, there is all the one that we intentionally add also, uh, 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 all the mistakes that can be done, the, all the split, all the contamination from outside. And the physical hazard, these ones are, are all the small pieces, so you can have everything. But in fact, it's just to be sure. So you have a nice photo of dry, uh, of dry uh, small fish in, uh, from Zanzibar, I think. Uh, this is typically, the, you will find some stones, some shells, some bones. So uh, they can have a they can have a, an impact, a small one, a problem on the teeth, or a big one, problem in the stomach. Just for food safety, the list is not closed. If you look at the, the, the case of COVID, uh, for example, it's a chapter that is always open, that you have to always to be proactive and involved in. Uh, in October last year, China Customs Authority have announced to discover trace of COVID in the packaging of seafood. So it's not, right now there is no evidence that the product can, but you have to, it have to be to enter in the general food safety measure. So what are the impacts? So here are the key facts of the World Health Organization. Um, in fact, we consider that food safety issue, uh, there is more than 200 diseases that are linked with it. And every, almost 10% of the population uh, fall ill uh, after eating contaminated, contaminated food. And we, we assume that there is almost half a million people that die every year. This is for all the food. But when we look at the figure for aquatic product, all the fisheries part, uh, we can see that fish is, is the most commonly implicated food category in outbreak. So this, um, you have a nice, a nice essay, a nice book uh, written on this by uh, Barrett and Al, in, issue in 2017. And you have some study in the United States, uh, UK, uh, EU, and we can see that more or less 10% of uh, the full bone diseases are coming from, uh, from fish reproduct, so 10%. 
So it's an issue. What, what is the food safety? If we look in detail in food safety, these are the measures that uh, we, can, we, we have to put in place, in fact, to control all the hazard. And you need to identify, to assess, and to control the hazard through all the different components. So you see the small boxes, there are supplier, traceability, biosecurity, maintenance, storage, transportation, personal hygiene, pest control, employees, training, etc., etc. So the small boxes on the right hand side is not uh, the less important. And all these are controlled by some SSOP. So, uh, procedure, operating procedure, uh, GMP, good management procedure, GHP, good, uh, good hygiene procedure, and all the prerequisites. In fact, that you, you, you control what you are doing, you identify, you assess. And if you want to be proactive, you, uh, you can go to step forward, which is ACCP, ACCCP that means you identify and you you try to be more proactive to uh, to to adapt your system to uh, to the to the to the the um, the change or the the new risk that can uh, emerge. Just a small reminder, Pierre Philippe. We've got five minutes left. Eh? Thank you. Okay. So, when you see the prerequisites, one of the, the you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, go, uh, not talk about Codex Alimentarius. So I will not go on Codex Alimentarius, but there are all the detailed prerequisites uh, that they are all proactive. Uh, it's uh, the full standard and uh, the, all the practice that are, that are always reviewed by, uh, and is managed by FAO and uh, World Health Organization. Quality insurance, as we say, it's, uh, it's a way to manage the food safety. You have many. Here I put uh, some label of some quality insurance, but uh, you have so many that, uh, that uh, you can, uh, you can um, that can be an asset for, your, for, for the, the production of aquaculture and that uh, covers food safety. But what difference between aquaculture and capture product? In fact, you have, it's, all, you, it's the same product after harvest, but uh, you have some uh, higher risk in aquaculture, for example, for with veterinary drug, the cross infection uh, of pathogen because you have high density, you have the chemical contamination, and also because aquaculture is closer to all the human activities. So all the, the contamination by, uh, by uh, pathogen of fecal origin, the contamination from uh, from a chemical are maybe higher in aquaculture, and you have the disease outbreak and the consequences. Lower risk in aquaculture than than uh, capture. Uh, in fact, is the parasite, and also in aquaculture, you have the opportunity to to have a full traceability that we you don't have in capture because you don't know the life uh, of the fish before you hook it, or you have it in your net, and the freshness at harvest, because you can choose when you harvest, and uh, you can uh, directly control the harvest to the process or the harvest to the market, which is not always the case when you are doing uh, fisheries. And you have some toxins that do not exist in aquaculture. The one I, say, uh, I, I told about, the ciguatera histamine, you have no issue in aquaculture. I will uh, not talk about the disease, but the disease is not food safety, but uh, the consequences of disease will have an impact on food safety, but disease are following the same management than food safety. So that's why most of the time they are included. Competent authority know it. And here we arrive to what, uh, what uh, we need to consider. Uh, we consider the, the organization, we consider the general, and we have the government action and the government action will be on food legislation, regulation and policy to put some rule, all the law enforcement. So the competent authority that are here to, to check, to, uh, to apply the law. We have also all the aspect of advice, education, 
research, data gathering, and all the providing health-related services. We have those two nice photos. In fact, the government uh, action have to be national and that have to be for export. So, yeah, Philippe, the, we've got three minutes left, please. Yes, no problem. A little bit more. This, speed, will, this will be uh, defined on the other presentation. You will have some practical example. Same thing for export. Uh, international requirement. You will have uh, some uh, uh, practical case on the next presentation. And uh, we have really two levels of responsibility, the producer and, produce and processor that are responsible for fish, uh, fish uh, safety and quality. But you have, we have the competent authority that, uh, that have a responsibility of control and uh, of uh, inspection, audit and sampling that would guarantee. I will not go through the different market because you will have some uh, detail on US import, but you, you will have the detail here of all the relevant uh, legislation and the, all the different steps for the US import, for the EU import, so the regulation, what is needed, with when we are going to chair the presentation, so you will have all the detail. Uh, we have a lot of text here because food safety also, it's record, uh, record procedure and uh, and rule and rule without writing you don't have and other the niche market you have a lot of uh, of specificity according to the market so uh, we 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 will have some uh, some uh, quick some example on the next uh, presentation just to conclude if we look food safety and area country uh, we have some strength because uh, it's a very dynamic aquaculture development sector. The aquaculture development is very dynamic in the sector. There is strong national market, a high demand in fish. So all these create uh, economic dynamics. There is some space available, most of the country. Some country are a bit more restricted, but a lot of space to develop aquaculture. And there is, we are talking about tropical species with a high demand to export also. Uh, the weakness will be the sector development. Uh, in fact, for some country, the, the aquaculture sector is not, it's uh, still nascent and uh, it's difficult to put in place a very strict uh, food safety issue for a, uh, an economic sector, which is not so dynamic for the country. The consumer education is one issue for the uh, national market. Infrastructure knowledge are common issue for, uh, for many countries on uh, Ayora, uh, uh, from Ayora member. And also they are all in tropical areas. So you have some issue about uh, to maintain the cold chain. So it's also uh, a weakness. We, uh, you, you need to, to bring ice. The opportunity, uh, you have a lot of market, regional market that uh, are good opportunity to be developed. Uh, so that will create a more economic uh, value that will create more, there is more uh, aquaculture will have an economic weight, more the food safety will be developed also. And you have a lot of complementarity between aquaculture strength and weakness in our country. You have some countries that are really advanced in some uh, question on food safety on aquaculture, some that are that are, have a need of uh, knowledge and uh, and uh, equipment, and in fact, in inside Indian Ocean, you have uh, the needs, the demand, and the offer, and the threat. Uh, it's uh, the normal threat of uh, food safety, which is, well, for sure, the quality control norms are strengthened, the pollution, the environment degradation, climate change, everything that can impact aquaculture and that can impact the quality of the environment where the animals are growing. So this was to finish this presentation with uh, one photo of a good illustration of food safety, which is cleaning and sanitation. You can see the mark on the tank that see that there is control record. So some, some of the country will recognize where it comes from. It's coming from, uh, from uh, Indian Ocean directly process. So, uh, Aubrey, I give you the floor.
Thank you very much, Pierre Philippe. We shall move on to the next uh, presenter. I'm just um, I take out. Thank you very much. That gives us an overview and the setting. And the next presenter on our on our um, agenda is Peter Saul Rogers. Good day, Peter. No. Peter. Have we lost Peter? Ah, yes. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, Aubrey, we need to put a bit uh, as a um, as a cord. Um, oh, I'm I'm there. Yeah. So then, let me. Um, hi, everyone. Hi, Peter. Um, I was um, yes. So let me um, let me make sure I can share my uh, my presentation, and um, and then we'll take it from there. Um, anyway, hi everybody. I'm I'm here. I'm based in in actually a, a, as well uh, based in in Kenya, um, but actually I, I I travel quite extensively in the region. So. Um, I, I can. What I'm going to try to do is give a overview of sort of the, what's happening with the private sector in terms of um, how the private sector sort of views things. Um, okay. So, can everybody see my screen? Nope. Okay. Let me. Uh, it says uh, it says loading should be coming up here. So um, you know I see that there you know we have a bunch of different ranges of sort of expertise and points of view. So bear with me. I'm trying to um, give us you know different perspectives, and so some people will 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 know this subject very well in some areas, and and other uh, other times it will be a little bit uh, new in terms of. Because when you when you're talking about private sector, you know I'm I'm loading the the file now. It'll be another. It looks like about halfway. So when you talk about the private sector, their viewpoint is going to be different than the, let's say an academic or some one of the relevant authorities or the institutions. So uh, I'm going to kind of go over some of the ways I describe some of the uh, the the standard operating procedures for companies that are in the that want to export i think everybody can see my screen now right um is it, i just want to make sure everybody can see it it's not a, not available yeah, yet it's, it's, oh really okay well it's showing it's that's showing, it yes we, is we it have there? It. You're on. oh okay so um, this is like so pathway to exports and explanation. If I speak too fast, put it in the chat because I tend to do that. So here's all the stakeholders when you're looking at uh, trade and how many of the of the different sort of actors and the different hats that people wear in the aquaculture uh, sector. So I, I'm not going to read every one of these slides. I have a lot of slides, and this is something we can go back and ask questions are. But let me let me pull some of the bigger points. You've got the farmer, but then you've also got on the other side of the wheel, you've got the laboratory, uh, you've got the inputs for the feeds. But in the middle, you have the the actual movement of the goods, the actual changing of the goods, processing, but then also the documents and the business registration, because as you uh, give a fish a document, it's also a type of value added. So fish requires, um, so we'll go to the next slide. If you see the documents in business, business registration is the sort of the focal point to make this wheel work. 
Uh, and you notice that the, 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 in the circle, you have the brokers and the traders, which is they're, they're sort of omnipresent throughout the whole system. And if it's domestic markets, if it's, uh, you know, if it's international markets. So some of the, uh, the, the documents that are required is registering your company, having a, a tax code with your company, depending on the, the, the revenue authority of your country. There's a lot of, you know, change between different countries within the IORA, but there's some similarities. And so I'm not going to read over everything. I just want you to sort of get the idea of the types of activities a fish processor will need to be aware of. Uh, and so if you look at the next, um, what is a competent authority? And I think a lot of you in my audience here are either associated with a competent authority or academics for the competent authority. But when you're talking about private sector, for me and my work, just so you can kind of get an idea of what they, you know, the, the is, what is the competent authority? So, you know, they, they actually get, I mean, all of us in the industry, we understand what it is, but it gets confusing. For instance, uh, just to give a, a, an anecdotal, in, in, in Somalia, there isn't really an active competent authority, but they're trying to trade even um, in some aquaculture products. So the way I describe it is, is that you have a, a match between the farmer and the buyer. And the way for those two to, to engage with each other and do a business transaction is for there to be an umpire. And the umpire is designated to be the one that makes it, whether the match, if you're off sides, if there's been a foul on the field, and that comes down to if there's food safety, if the fish has some bacteria, then there would be, uh, the referee would call. But you have to have a recognized referee that everybody says, okay, that's the person that's going to officiate this particular trade, this particular match. And so where does the competent authority fall into this activity where you have the aquaculture pond or farm, you have the shipping, the customs, the freight, the cold store, the uh, oftentimes the private sector won't quite understand, is it a freight document? They don't know. So what we want to, what I explain is, is that the referee is going between your shipping and the customs of the importing country so that they understand where the ref would be able to uh, call the whistle. And, you know, you look at some of the things uh, back to, you know, the things that a private sector will be looking at is their records, their logs of how the process has worked. So, you know, this is the HACCP, the critical control points, and different, uh, you know, levels of HACCP. You know, there's how many critical control points. And that's one thing you ask a processor is how many critical control points do you have? Uh, is, is it uh, going to be a fresh product? It would be less if it's going to go into the cold store. Some of these other things, you know, like I said, I don't want to read everything because I think we can all read it and we can go back. But uh, for instance, if you're exporting to the, to the FDA, what you, to, to the United States, you have to have relevant information on, the, on as you as a partner. And we'll go into a little bit more of, um, of the uh, compliance in line with exporting to China. So U U.S. has one type of importing requirements. The EU has some. China has some as well. The Chinese markets are more, a little bit less uh, transparent in terms of what needs to happen. But it, 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 there's a, you have a controls in terms of making sure that people are safe. And so in terms of the food that they eat. And so, um, and I like to put in, um, you know, we, we can go through this, the quarantine certi certification and stuff like that. And, and, you know, in today's time, those issues have become a lot more relevant. I think countries across the board, we're seeing in Middle East, we're seeing investments in food because countries have become a lot more aware of how important it is to have food in their region and importation of food and looking at the quality and making sure that it has met certain standards. 
EU is probably the mo most stringent and they have a lot of these different uh, requirements. Now, so for instance, back to talking to the private sector is explaining to them that there's rules to the game. The competent authority is the umpire, but they're reading a playbook that has based between the buyer and the seller there's different playbooks. For instance, iOS 22000, there's, maybe there's echo labels so that the product has been labeled as MSC, but the competent authority is just looking at what the importing country would be required and not one of the private standards that the buyer would require. And so that's something that that, that uh, private sector will get confused about. They'll say, oh, but it's MSC certified. So, you know, what they're looking for is, is the ways to label their, their product, but also have a better story. So m most countries will require understanding where the fishes come from, the species, the commercial name, uh, the size of the fish is something that's important. Uh, the the HS code, I mean, you know, the size of the fish is is important because if you buy, uh, t let's say you buy twenty five thousand uh, kilos or twenty five metric tons, one shipping container, you want to make sure as a buyer, you want to make sure it's the right sizes. It's not too small or it's not too big, depending. And so these sort of things are 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 really important when it comes to compliance. And if you look at, for instance, the batch number, going back to uh, Pierre Philippe's, where he showed you where they were doing cleaning and they had a tank and they showed the batch number. So being able to document and show the chain of custody and the compliance at each one of these steps is how you promote your company on an international level. So, for instance, you know, your freezing dates, those are going to have uh, that's going to be an aspect with a critical control point. So if you want to apply to be a fish exporter, there's a lot of processes that you have to do. But one of the key elements, which isn't in here, but what will happen is, is that countries will require you to be a member of an association. So let's say you're exporting uh, sea cucumber is your mariculture, your aquaculture, or let's use prawns, for example. So what if there's a couple very reputable uh, prawn exporters or and the exporters are exporting a lot of maybe 100 containers in, in, a, in the course of, you know, of maybe a quarter or something. But what happens is, is that if a small let's say, upstart farm comes in and they don't have the compliance issues in place and they haven't done the right proper procedures and then they try to export, let's say they're going to export from Indonesia to, to Europe. Well, Europe will say it's looking at the country of origin. And if there's a bad container, a container where it wasn't compliant, the customs officials weren't ready for it. They're not going to do it by, by company. They're going to do it by country, meaning they're going to reject that container. And then there's going to be, there could, there could be a rejection of all containers from that country. So what, what companies will do is they form the associations so that you can only export if you're part of that association. And part of that sort of being a part of that association is these processes in order to get to a level where your compliance is 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 in line so uh it's not just a qualification for you to, to register as an exporter with your particular country but it's also a way to be a participant with the other exporters in your country and this is the types of roadmaps that would help you come on board as an exporter um and then we look at like how payments may are, are determined to happen and compliance is a very important component of that. The obvious thing is if, I, if a company wants to buy good quality fish, they would expect it to be good quality fish. And so the international payment terms put those stipulations in there. They say that we want to make sure that the histamine levels, the bacteria levels are of a certain level, but they don't exceed that level. 
there are, there's a maximum that they're able to do. And then the payments are attached to that. So uh, there's a couple different, you know, ways of payments. There's pay up on demand right at the beginning, but companies have a hard time doing that because it's sight unseen and they want to make sure that the, the fish has got the paperwork, got the compliance. So then there's another one where they, they pay a little bit and then they see the documents, the compliance documents, and they can ask to say, we want to make sure that the fish is done in this amount of batches because then it looks at like the rejects are, are less. We want to make sure about the size or we want to know what the actual freezing temperature is. So there's a difference in 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 actual how you know they want to follow to make sure that it was frozen the whole time and so those are like the two three and four and then the last one's a letter of credit and the reason why i'm bringing the letter of credit up and why we're talking about payments even though when we're talking about a compliance conversation is because the banks become the intermediary and if the banks don't understand about the compliance documents then you find yourself in a position where you haven't showcased your product in a compliance standard way. And the banks don't know about aquaculture and they're just looking to check a box to show. And so you say as a buyer, I'll buy this fish as long as it's matched these compliance documents. And so you as an exporter want to make sure that you have the exact compliance documents that, that so the two banks can look at them very clearly and see these match and so as much as it seems like well payments and and, com and compliance and and safety standards are different things they're actually especially with new companies and companies that are establishing trade it's actually the the, the cornerstone of the trade so uh we could talk about full payment against documents against documents just makes the documents come over uh so you see the documents before they get shipped and these are some of the things that fall in there. Bill Lading, the health certificate, which is the competent authority, the packing list, which will also talk about the sizes of the fish, the commercial invoice, so you know what you're getting in that. So, and then the, the certificate of origin, which uh, is, becomes important in, in, even in, in capture fisheries as well. So um, going into sample documents. So what happens is, is when we, you know, we look at these sample documents, you see, okay, here, I'm, I'm, if you take a moment and you look at these, you're looking for where is the referee stamp? Where is the exporter's ability to put in where they, where they got their product? Uh, and so these are, when, you, when you're helping a, a company become an exporter, they're getting confused about requests for verification and stuff. You know, and, and, and every country will have sort of online uh, information about this. Um, you know, here we have one from Indonesia, which is the fish in an inspection agency. So this is showing that the fish passed the inspections as being, so the referee didn't blow the whistle to say, the referee approved that that was a a score on the goal. Let's put it that way. Um, you know, and I I don't know how much time I have here, but we can go through some more of these documents. But uh, I, we can come back to that one. Um, the EUR was really important in terms of EUR one because the European Union was requiring again. They're requiring these different. Uh, uh, information in order for them to receive the fish. Sometimes there's quotas with fish and how much fish can be imported in and, and then being able to uh, be aware of that as an exporter. Um, but and then also your HS codes, it becomes really key and important in, here in, in, in terms of if you're going to export, you don't want to mix batches because maybe there it's two different, you've got different HS codes. So you, it's going to be easier to try to keep one in one container load. Container load is 25 metric tons. And there really is a difference between shipping if you're going to ship uh, via, via freight and via, um, you know, sea. There's a, there's a big difference when you ship at a full container rate because then you can kind of keep your batches okay. But, you know, there's other things. So you've got five minutes. So yeah, you, you're so doing I'm just well. going to. I'm well. just going to.
But I'm just kind of finishing up here. But there's other things too. So for instance, this was uh, a fumigation certificate. But the thing that needed to be fumigated in order to, to export the product for this particular case that we had worked on was imagine that you have a container, shipping container, and inside the shipping container, you have boxes on pallets of, of carton boxes of frozen uh, fish, frozen product, right? And in so the boxes, everything about that particular product was compliant. The veterinarian certificate, the referee had not blown the whistle. The everything was compliant in terms of the farmer and the pond and the fish, all the ingredients in the fish. But where their problem was, was the actual pallet was made of wood and the pallet wasn't fumigated. So there's a lot more to the, when you talk about international exports and so your pathway to, to, to better markets, you have to pay attention to some of these finer details, like fumigating your pallets that you're putting your fish on top of. Those are some of the compliance issues that exporters, fish exporters have to pay attention to. So, um, and then the last thing I'll finish with is, is that the compliance, and uh, when you look at the compliance, that's actually how you ensure, because your compliance is gonna give you the value and you're insuring a product. You can't ship it without insuring it. Insuring it is what allows the product as a value to go into the container. So you have third-party companies like SGS or Better Ventas that do that. They'll come and they'll open the container and say, this is compliant fish. Then they'll close the container so the insurance can work. So you see how it spreads a little bit outside just checking the quality of the fish. Uh, uh, and, and, and I'm, you know, I'm open for, for questions after this. I hope this was helpful. Thank you very much, Peter. We'll take all the questions after all the pres presenters, but thank you very much for that and a kind of very practical uh, export orientated. I like the analogy of the authorities being the referee and arbitrating between the, the producers and the consumers. Um, thank you. Now we'll have, we'll have now, we'll, we'll go down now for, from the generalities into specific situations. And first we have, Dr. Domitila Kiule Muendo, who will provide the some ground situation of Kenya. So, uh, Dr. Muendo, please take over. Thank you so much, Humphrey. Um, I th I think uh, Peter, you need to remove your yeah, yeah, yeah. your presentation. Oh, could, yes. Could that, could that presentation be removed for the materials? Up. I think uh, I think uh, Domitila can uh, take over. Domitila, would you like to start? If uh, if uh, she if she uh, share her screen, normally it will take over. Um, Uh, do you see my presentation? Yes, we do. Yeah, just put it in okay. um, presentation mode, like Peter did. Yeah, I've, I've done it. It is in presentation mode. Yes. yes. Good. Please continue. I'm I'm seeing it. So are you able to see it now? Yes. Okay. No problem. Thank Go you ahead. so much. Good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Welcome to this uh, presentation. My name is uh, Domitila Chule, working for the government of Kenya. I'm a 
Center Director of one of the Kemfri Centers based at the National Aquaculture Research and Training and Development Center that is based in Central Kenya. So I'm going to share with you the Kenyan experience on issues of quality assurance and the safety concerns. So, so I'm going to share with you the Kenyan aquaculture situation and also aspects of fisheries because uh, uh, as, uh, during our introduction, uh, Kenya is an emerging aquaculture country. So it has not yet developed, but very soon will be there. Uh, 1.2 million Kenyans earn livelihood from the sector. So some Kenyans are involved in farming, others in processing, and others in marketing. So others benefit directly, and others also benefit indirectly. Uh, there is a lot of demand for fish in Kenya. The demand is es estimated at 500,000 metric tons per year, yet we are talking of a supply of 160,000. So there is that deficit, uh, which is uh, around uh, 450. And uh, in Kenya, fish consumption is very low. We are consuming at 5 kilograms against uh, that of 10, kilograms per person per year. So for us to get enough fish, and we know fish in the world, that is in the capture fisheries, it's dwindling because of overfishing, pollution, issues of climate change, use of illegal gears, weak policy implementation. So for us to get enough of this fish, aquaculture remains the only option. Uh, aquaculture will also uh, will also bring the gap when it comes to restocking back these uh, lakes and uh, dams. So aquaculture is very important in Kenya. Uh, the fisheries at large contributes to 0.5% to the national GDP. So most of our deficit is um, substituted by imports that are estimated at that 2,000 metric tons per year. Yes, you can see um, in these uh, imports, they are, they are high here. Uh, during um, uh, these, uh, these years between 2017, 2018, they are increasing because uh, fish is in high demand. People have switched from uh, eating red meat to eating white meat. So that is why the demand for fish is high. So this is how we have been producing over the years, 2008, 2009. There was a peak in production in 2009 and 2012 because uh, the government introduced an economic stimulus program where farmers were given feeds and the seed and uh, so they were able to produce a lot of fish. And then we have uh, the issue of, issues of uh, cage farming. We have a cage farming in Lake, uh, Lake Victoria and Lake Naivasha, that is um, in Lake Trukana. So we have also production coming from those lakes, from cages. We have, we have also a small percentage coming from the ocean through um, mariculture. Uh, two species there are produced, as we will see in the coming slides. So that is a general overview. So I'm trying to move to air. Yeah. These are the current species that are captured in Kenya. Where are the capture systems in Kenya? Sorry. So we have southern ponds, we have liner ponds, then we have raceways, uh, cages in the Lake Victoria modern hatcheries. Uh, from our previous presenter, we said that it is very important to consider where we are putting our fish. When we are sighting our fish ponds, it is important that we consider issues of safety, issues of heavy metals from the soil. Uh, farms are supposed to be sighted away from our dumping sites or from a quarry so that we don't have accumulation of metals. So the source of water is very important. Most of the um, farms, yeah, their source of water is from rivers, from um, 
from boreholes. So let's say if a river is contaminated, then we are talking of a farm that is contaminated and ultimately the products will accumulate these uh, contaminants. So water source of water is very important and also is also important in, uh, in production, especially in the hatchery. So these are some of the culture systems that are practiced in Kenya. And uh, currently we have a seaweed that is practiced in the coastal region of Kenya. And it is first growing industry and it has a red market in China, Ireland, Malaysia, among others. So there has been a lot of value addition and uh, communities that have been making soaps, shampoos, gels, animal feeds, cosmetics, and other products that can come, uh, that come from uh, seaweed. And also more innovations are coming up as uh, our researchers on the ground are working with the communities in those regions. But uh, we have a lack of permits and license to grow seaweeds and um, uh, issues of seed weak extension and training programs value addition is also limited and uh, lack of gears to work so those are some of the challenges that are facing the seaweed value chain and the cost of kenya um i don't know where i had a yeah these are the organisms that are grown in kenya rainbow trout um this is a uh, practiced or it's grown in raceways then we have a uh, catfish that is Clarius garapinus, Af African carp, Labia victorianus, then we have common carp, we have ornamental that is uh, gaining a lot of momentum, then we have shrimps, and then at the coastal region we have milkfish and millet, and we also other, we are also doing other, other research so that we can determine the potentiality of other species that can be adopted and grown in Kenyan fish farms according to their demand. So there's a lot of concerns would, uh, when it comes to issues of quality because uh, at the lagging sites, especially at the cages sites or even in big farms, some of these big farms, they lack cold storage facilities, therefore compromising the quality of these uh, products. And then there is high spoilage rate, post-harvest losses because of high temperatures, especially at the coast. We have poor red networks and that, uh, you know, that, that uh, the traders are not able to move their products in time. Poor marketing, and then there is inadequate legislation and aquaculture regulations, although plans are underway so that we can have this full in implementation. Poor sanitation at harvesting sites. So like if fish is harvested at the cages, this is a situation that we encounter on the ground. Instead of having cooler boxes, or traders, most of which are youth and women, they are putting this fish in baskets and other rudimentary um, items and uh, equipment that uh, compromise the quality of this fish in the market. So you find that a fish trader comes with a fish in the morning when it is fresh and uh, when it undergoes uh, spoilage, then and you will find that at, at the end of the day, the fish is spoiled and uh, this one can have a detrimental effect on the health of uh, children, the health of the user, the, uh, of the consumer, and also it can fetch very low prices. So if those are some of the challenges that are facing the Kenyan traders and in terms of uh, livelihoods. So, I'm trying to move on to the next slide. Oh. Okay. So in aquaculture, we have hatcheries. Also, so what are some of the safety measures 
that are take uh, that are being uh, considered uh you find that uh, in men hatcheries the uh, men farmers in kenya are doing sex reversal where they are using a uh, methyl testosterone hormone that is uh, mixed with the feed and then it is administered in the first 28 days of the growth of this fish so that they can have all male uh, tilapia fingerlings so this one is a, a practice and um, uh, lucky enough the kenyan government now has a residue monitoring plan and uh, so they are able to monitor some of these uh, uh, residues demand for fingerlings is very high so you expect so many hatcheries to be in operations and others don't have permits they are they don't have authentication so you find that the quality of those fingerlings are very low so the government now is giving a, a green flag to those private hatcheries now before they venture into produce production so we've witnessed a number of uh, drugs and, and microbials that are being used and uh, some of them these include sodium chloride potassium permanganate hydrogen peroxide, formaldehyde, copper sulfate, oxytetracycline, triphenylting that is used to control molasite. But those are just the snails and other families. So you find that the use of these and microbial drugs, they cause a lot of resistant, such that when person go when people go to the hospital for treatment then they are, they have developed some kind of resistance so uh, the issues of antibiotic resistance is an emerging issue and uh, antibiotics in Kenya they just sold over the counter and uh, so we need to strengthen some of those uh, areas so that we can have uh, some of these uh, drugs controlled and their usage so we try to train our farmers on the best concentration to use uh, during the operations in the hatcheries. An emerging issue is also the production of Artemia that is being done and practiced at the coastal region. And uh, this one is very good for the fish, the small fish, because uh, it improves on survival rate. So the issues of fish feeds is also a big challenge in Kenya. We have cottage industries, most of our feeds are imported and they are very expensive. So those who are doing the local manufactured feeds, some of them are don't, they are not of good quality. And there are issues of aflatoxins and you know aflatoxins is very very risky because it's carcinogenic and also it can cause some other health hazards so i don't want to repeat this but these are some of the hazards that may occur in aquaculture products harmful bacteria and we are doing and checking considerations of fish safety because if our people are sick then it means that we'll, uh, the, the economy of that country is compromised. Like if you see the situation of COVID-19, what is happening now? It's because um, the economies are just at a standstill. Nothing is going on. So if we can prevent or if we can take into consideration issues of safety when we are producing our fish, then we are talking of a healthy nation. We, we, we need to grow in economies, tourism, trade, food supply chains, now cross multiple national borders. We are exporting and we are importing. So issues of safety are very good in terms of trade and also the well-being of that particular country. So it is very important to avoid some of these things, like the metros and the machine feelings. We are doing a feeding program and some farms in Kenya. Excuse me, so Domitila. We've got five minutes yes. left, eh? Thank you. Okay, okay. So these are some of the fiscal hazards uh, that we need to look into. And this one is a 
uh, microorganisms of health concerns from a study carried out on Kenyan aperture products, and majority of aperture products are contaminated by microorganisms. Yeah, we are talking of E. coli, also after sequencing emanated from fecal contamination. The contaminants so reflect the handling standards. So it means that uh, our standards of handling are not well uh, taken care of. And we, as we, we all know, some of these microbes are very pathogenic, like E. coli and Salmonella. So we found out some of these aquatic products that are being sold in the country. Over time, they had this uh, E. coli and other disease causing. So this one is just um, the antibiotic response patterns. So on my right, um, this is how they responded. This is just to show you how uh, these products, when subjected to these uh, antibiotics, how they behaved. Some of them were resistant and others were susceptible. So which are the best uh, uh, antibiotics now to target some of these uh, bacteria? So this one is just a, an overview of what is happening and how the resistant bacteria become in our systems. So the government um, has now put in place a main processing plants after doing some of these researches and also advising the government. We have some plants that have been put in Western, in Central Kenya, and some others are coming up so that we don't have these issues of contamination. So this is an industry, people are producing sausages. There is a residue monitoring plan for aquaculture. Just building on good manufacturing practices, good aquaculture practices, and uh, site of phytosanitary and the sanitary. And uh, we are trying to incorporate a fish safety curriculum now in the Kenyan education system so that we can have uh, superior products um, currently, also, the government is advocating for the production of value-added products. These are some of the value-added products that we have produced for the sector, and they are available, and we have ingredients that have been permitted and the others that are not being permitted. So we advise traders and processors on what is available for them and what they are supposed to uptake in their production. Some of these technologies we are advocating improve fish smoking cune because of uh, issues of uh, polycycling aromatic hydrocarbons that is an issue it's causing cancer so if you have smoked fish that is of low quality then it means that the society is sick so we are advocating for the production of technologies now that can produce our uh, products that are of high quality and that can be even sold in regional and international markets so the biosecurity, we are protecting the fish farms and the fish ponds, producing fish in cages and also incorporating some probiotics so that we can have microbial flora in the in the science or in the digestive system of the fish so that we can have efficient and improved FCR. So um, food control system in, in uh, Kenya of course, we have a food safety bill and policy uh, that is in the parliament. And then we have the food control system. The controls are there, laboratories, and then uh, these uh, the results are communicated through media. So I don't have to dwell into this. These are some of the capacities that we have. We have labs. Yeah, we have traditional inspection by the public here. They just present themselves in the markets and then they get to know what is there and what is being practiced so these are some of the practical and interventions and some of the existing capacities emanating from the concerns that have been presented in the in the area of food safety so to conclude kenya is part of global village it is a very active trader in global fish import and export market so Recently, there was a, we were given an opportunity to export our aquaculture products to EU market, and uh, that one is underway. And very soon, we we'll love our fish out that there. Otherwise, Kenya is a signatory member of various international agreements, WTO, 
And we have uh, manuals or so standard operating procedures that are followed by manufacturers and our farmers so that we can have safe products for consumption by the Kenyan people and also by the world at large. I want to thank you for listening to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Domitila, for a very visual and nice expose of the situation in Kenya. And now we shall pass on to, to one of the largest uh, countries. We now have a presentation by Dr. TV Sankar of the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare in India. And uh, this is of the country which is uh, one of the largest um, producers. Dr. Sankar, please Thank proceed you. with your presentation. The previous presentation is still on. You have to put on your presentation and it will override it. Is it visible? Yes, I think we can see it. No, thank thank you. you. Good morning and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed happy to be at this seminar today. At the outset, I thank the organizers for inviting me. I am uh, Dr. G. V. Shankar, working as principal scientist. Uh, with the Central Institute of Fisheries Technology, Cochin, which is at the southernmost tip of India. And uh, basically, I'm a biochemist turned into fish processing and uh, fish handling. Subsequently, I took over quality assurance as my subject. And now I'm specialized in uh, food safety and uh, quality assurance. The topic uh, for today is uh, safety standards and quality assurance of aquatic uh, products, a general discussion on India's experience. Uh, I'm not going to give any information on the general aquaculture practices or operations, rather I just give a small discussion on uh, fish production in India and its utilization export of seafoods from India, export issues faced by India, and the mechanism of regulation in this regard. This first slide, no, this particular slide I'm avoiding because this has been extensively discussed. Now, now when we talk of standard, there are two sets of standards. One is food standard, other one is safety standard. Quality standards are concerned with the safety and hygiene, packaging, labeling, handling, and storage. While safety standards are basically the microorganisms and the toxins produced by them, environmental contaminants, additives, agricultural chemicals, etc. All these become a hazard when it goes into the ecosystem. But unfortunately, once it reaches the ecosystem, it comes back to us. So that is the main problem with this uh, issue. Hence, we are enforcing food safety in this area as well. Now, coming to India's production, India produces about 12.8 uh, million tons seafood. In this marine capture fisheries account for about 3.6 million tons, 4% of the total production. Inland capture fishery takes about 1.7 million tons, about 14% of the inland production system. And aquaculture produces about 7 million tons, which is, uh, I mean, comp compared to the international production, it is uh, about uh, um, fairly better placed. And when you just talk about like the production, 
it is basically revolves and in the uh, shrimp production particularly pinus monodon which of pinus banami and macrobrachium rosenbergi and of course the inland fisheries culture uh, some of the local fishes are also been cultured and which accounts for the important uh, export product as well from india when you see the export the total export from india is 1.8 million tons in fact one tenth of the total production from india is being exported when you see the slide uh, the shrimp occupies the primary position as far as export, export is concerned over 50% of the uh, export is uh, shrimp and in terms of value it accounts for about 73% and the second position is taken by a fresh uh, frozen fish rather which is accounting for about 17.3% in terms of uh, quantity and 7.6% in, in terms of value and the major markets when you say the major markets for india are japan usa eu southeast asian countries middle east and other smaller countries as well but you can see EU and ESA occupies 33 to 35 percent of the total export. In terms of value, US contributes to 35 percent of um, followed by EU, China, Japan, and other countries. The main products, if you take the export, are frozen shrimp, uh, frozen uh, and, um, other crustaceans, frozen cephalopods, frozen fin fishes dried fishes, live fishes, and other others. The offers include basically the products developed from the fishery resources. Now, when you export, obviously, it's in line with the standards of other countries. The food safety is a primary concern affecting the international trade. We know that there is no dispute on this. The codex standards are available and every country has got its own country standard and therefore there are controls for the imported commodity. Rejection due to antibiotic uh, residues are serious in this, uh, in this decade because primarily due to its um, health impacts, particularly the antimicrobial resistance. When you see the rejections data, Starting from 2002 to 2021, of course, I missed a few years in between. There, there are 25 to 30 rejections from India by the by EU. Uh, the product wise analysis shows the percentage reduction are maximum for shrimp followed by uh, cephalopods and uh, Fish. But when you see the rejection from ESA, the percentage of share rejections to the total rejection, the total import is they are reduced considerably from 6.1 to 0.31 percent between 2004 and 2017. When you analyze the rejection data, you can clearly say the rejections are uh, in specific uh, cases like improper health certificate, histamine, sugar poisoning, additives, foreign bodies, heavy metal residues, cadmium and mercury particularly, and then the insufficient or incorrect labeling. Then uh, on the issues of um, Spoilage like a total plate count and specific spoilage bacteria, then uh, defective packaging, presence of pathogenic bacteria like vibrios, and more importantly, the, the presence of antibiotics, that is, forbidden chemicals uh, like nitrofurans, chloramphenicol, and among uh, nitrofuran, the metabolites are finding place in the rejection list now. And India, unfortunately, had a few rejections in AOIZ, a metabolite for a solid on a compound of uh, nitrofuran. 
But when you do the uh, analysis of the rejection pattern, it is um, it can be seen the root cause of rejection indicate the inadequacy in the implementation of good manufacturing practices, handling issues, use of banned chemicals, and more correctly the traceability of the raw material. So these are important factors when we try to put the food safety in position for a particular ecosystem. So what are the options with us? We have to have a good regulatory mechanism, good preventive strategies, and we have the HACCP system. We have to convert the available HACCP into the aquaculture system. We have to practice good manufacturing practices, good aquaculture practices, hygienic practices, and any other standards which are internationally accepted, which was very clearly shown in the presented by the first presentation and the importance of good aquaculture practice has been envisaged and the importance of prerequisite programs have been discussed and all these are very important as far as uh, uh, this uh, aquaculture is coming and said if when we will just see how uh, the mechanism of control happens in India you know, India's uh, you know, the food uh, FSS came into existence in the year 2006. Prior to FSS's um, Food Safety Standards Authority of India, the apex body as far as food safety is concerned, uh, prior to its inception, the Indian scenario was that it was controlled by so many acts which are controlled by different ministries. So there was not a unified ministry to control this. So this itself was a big issue. Then upon the elaboration, we just found what is the reason how to improve it. The multiple laws and controls is a problem. Enforcement by different agencies, another issue. Different quality standards and requirements are another problem. Inadequate testing and inspection facilities, inadequately trained manpower, non-harmonization of the food safety standards with international perceptions and traceability, multiple FMS system in operation in a country. This is another problem faced by India because so many FSMS programs were operating in, a, in the country. So the mechanism of uh, regulation becomes a difficult process. There was need to remove the uh, multiple regulations and harmonize with international laws. It is very important. Also framing regulatory requirements based on the science-based analysis, facilitating trade without compromising consumer safety and many others like that. So this is the thing what I was saying, multiple uh, food safety certification system operating between 2005 and 2015 in India, these are the five, five or six uh, certification system which are operating. But when you compare to the previous um, act, the BFI Act of 1954, to the present act of food safety standards, uh, which came into being in 2006, in the previous act, all the manufacturing uh, units were under local authorities, no provisions for improvement notices, PMP and GHP were not mandatory. There was no punishment for wrong behavior, no regulation on imports, which has been totally transformed into uh, in the new concept. The big, big manufacturing uh, places that came under the central licensing authority of FSSA in New Delhi. Compulsory pre inspection before giving a license. Good manufacturing practice and good hygienic practices become mandatory as for Schedule 4. Fine and penalty through adjudication or punishment through court. Special import regulations uh, came into existence. So these are some of the notable um, uh, notable um, points in the latest regulation. As a follow up of this in 2016, Food Safety Standards Act came into existence. It was enacted by Government of India on 24th August 2016 for implementation and enforcing of 
This act, the Food Safety Standards Authority was constituted and came into existence in 2008. And the role of this organization was for registering and licensing food business in the country and is headed by the CEO who heads the FSSI and have control on the Food Safety Commissioners uh, placed in all the 29 states and nine union territories across the country. And the day-to-day -day activities and registration are governed by these commissioners through uh, local bodies. And the food safety officers under the de designated officer under the commissioner will perform the normal duties of inspection, licensing, and things like that. Another important thing which was um, essential for having a food safety control is the regulation and the uh, rules and regulations. The FSSA brought in a lot of scientific bodies in line with the product, product based, commodity based panels, scientific panels were brought into place, developed the code of practices for each commodity which is available in the website of the uh, Government of India. It is established uh, laboratories in, in line with the ISO 17025, which is the basic requirement for checking the commodities whether they are meeting the uh, required standards as per the international requirement. They came into existence. So, what happened as a result of this, the Food Safety Standards Authority brought in three level of laboratories in the country. The primary food uh, laboratories uh, uh, notify the laboratories and research institution accredited as per ISO 17025 by an accredited agency for carrying out regular food analysis of the uh, samples mean for export or for domestic purpose. Presently, there are about 190 uh, you know, food testing laboratories. Uh, under Food Safety Standards Authority of India. And the second line of um, um, laboratories are referral food laboratories. There are, uh, they are to carry out analysis on the appeal sample, which are under uh, case or which are confiscated by the government. There are presently 19 referral labs established in the country. And the third level of uh, uh, laboratories are national liberal laboratories to set up countrywide standards for routine procedures, validation of such standard procedures and testing methods, development of new methods for ensuring proficiency in testing across the food laboratories with special reference to risk of food categories. So presently, there are 12 NRL. Uh, referral labs in uh, position with, along with two and ANRLs. But since uh, only 10% of the India's production goes into export, but we have a fairly good regulatory measure as far as export is concerned. But for a uh, uh, domestic market, we don't go for day to day or normal evaluation. But evaluation is done as per the uh, as per the requirement of the conditions. But for an establishment to become a, a domestic uh, to compete in the domestic market, they should have a certification from the FSSI, and also the FSSI conducts verification and inspection of uh, premises and their protocols of production before granting the certification. Random inspections and uh, queries are made and further action is taken based on the output of the queries. And the samples uh, from the violators, for instance, are taken to FSSI approved laboratories and the analytical result, uh, results will decide they are paid in the, um, in the market. Uh, market. So there are strict regulations happening domestic as well. So uh, the need of the hour right now is the safe food regime for the consumer across the globe. And I appreciate the initiative of the IORA and AFD in setting up the board moving. 
I hope and believe a lot more will follow to achieve this goal. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sankar, for that presentation and covering the, the situation of India. And now, participants, we've reached the closing sector of the webinar. And I would uh, like to welcome some questions from the participants. And I suggest that you write it in the chat box, lift your hand up, and then we can respond to it. So, Do Dr. Sankar, if, Dr. Sankar, if you can stop sharing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, Peter, you are still sharing. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay. And, So for the question, if it's uh, to, possible to put a hand, up, uh, hand on, um, or to write the question in the chat, we are going to, to check. Please note that if you write the questions on the chat, and we cannot cover it at the moment, we will get back to you with a response after the webinar. We'll try and take as many as we can now, but should not, that not be possible, we'll respond uh, subsequently via email. Any questions? Maybe in the time being, I can I can propose you uh, time to think about question. Just to propose you a, a small consultation. Um, yes. Good idea. I, I will. Um, here is it. So the same. We had we had. Uh, yes. I think you see my you see my screen. Um, sorry. Up. So we will have a, um, we will use again the Mentimeter. We had the twenty six answer to my previous question. So here we I have three questions. So if you can connect uh, with your uh, if you can connect with your uh, your phone or your computer. Uh, to www.menfi.com. So again, I put it on the chat to everybody. So the connection is www.menfi.com. And we have three questions. You will see it's, uh, it's easy to answer. So the first, the first question is, uh, so you need to put the code. I put the code in the chat also. And I activate the devotee. Okay. So uh, we will see directly uh, the, the answer. If we can, uh, so you just connect at uh, menti.com. You put the code. Back. If there is some issue, just tell me. The code is on the top. So we have one answer already. So it's the objective is really to see where where are you where in the future you will be really interested to focus on food safety. What are the subjects that uh, you really like to develop? You can put uh, several answers. So uh, please. Uh, So just connect uh, the code is four three five five. 
8041. You just have to put the code when you connect to uh, menti.com. We see directly the, the answer. Just, I'm just trying to ha to have a to have a bit more participation. Then after we have an another focus question on the also you, what are your expectations? What uh, what can be uh, provided to develop uh, food safety according to your situation, your experience, and uh, your your uh, your needs. So we see that it really focuses on EU US market. We have the quality management element for aquaculture also. But EU US market and export requirement together they are represent more than 40% of uh, of the food safety concern it seems. Just a few more votes. And uh, we can move to another question. Okay. So just uh, connect to, to WW, you have on the top of uh, the slide. If you see, you see it well, you have www.mt.com and you have the code. So uh, you use your telephone, you use your your um, your computer or whatever internet devices. It's 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 working and it's. Uh... So let's move to the second question. The question is also to to really uh, have a feedback from you on uh, on your future need on uh, what are. Uh, what are the, your concerns in food safety? So if I move to the second question, here is it. It's which component, component of the value chain for aquaculture we need to focus on? Because yes, we are talking about export, we are talking about uh, HACCP, uh, or the different control, but uh, on the different, uh, different uh, components of the value chain, which one uh, can be an issue, can be uh, a, a source of uh, teaching, can, what, which one uh, you, you can be interested to. So for all the food safety, so local uh, export market, uh, all the different ASAP that can uh, get that can uh, that can again go to the product that can have an impact on the product that can, ha can have an impact on the business of aquaculture because aquaculture is still an activity to uh, a business activity. So just so for you to. Um, Just to gather your your thought, your your requirement, the thing that uh, you are interested in. So for the one that join right now, you can still join. You put www.menti.com and the code is four three five five eight zero four one. It's in the chat and it's also uh, on the top of the slide, just in front of you. It seems that we ha we have a we have a interest on all the different aspects, which is uh, which is nice. Actuary and processing and farm in fact there is no big big differences they're reaching 20 percent so we 
let's move to this, the third question. Uh, and that is also the same thing to, to gather your, your feedback. Your, um, uh, in fact, no, more than your feedback, in fact, your, your expectation on, uh, on a possible uh, focus for the future on food safety. Because we talk about, a lot about export market, but food safety is also local market. So uh, between export, local market, the, all the action from the, component, uh, the competent authority, uh, all the public sector in general, which is education and so on, all the aspect of uh, legislation, regulation, and also how you chair the different uh, responsibility, the different action in uh, the food safety uh, management uh, at the level of a country, uh, the uh, food safety uh, management. So which part you would like to focus on? This has... Uh, So you can still connect. We have more and more connection, which is good. So this was the, the last the last question. So we just after we move back to the General question to, to the, uh, from the presentation, from the, all the questions where we can bring uh, an answer right now and to take uh, the opportunity to be all together to, uh, uh, to, to chair, to chair and uh, to bring uh, more, more information, more, uh, more precision if, uh, from the presentation, but also from the concept of food safety in general. So I'm closing down the vote. Thank you for this. They will have a last uh, vote in after. That will be for the evaluation of uh, the webinar. And uh, you, I will leave it open so you can, uh, you can, uh, you can vote later on. So let's be back. Um, Thank you. Thank you very much, Pierre-Philippe. Yeah. Now we will look at some of the questions that, um, that are coming up. Um, We've had some uh, uh, compliments to several several of the presentations. I won't go into that, but we do have a we do have a question from uh, from Mozambique, and the question is: Although there is a competent authority dealing with fish quality and safety inspection in Mozambique, how can Mozambique further enhance its safety and quality of agriculture and seafood projects? products to satisfy the requirements not only for local markets but for export as well and uh, if there are any appropriate food control structures that could achieve this so it's really to look even though it's got um, Peter sounds a little bit yeah. down your line um, even though they have a competent authority how can they enhance okay. Enhance this for the export market. Well, you know, you. Um, if everybody can hear me, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in on that. Um, you know, one of the things they, um, I think got, maybe. We, excuse me. There's somebody who's who's speaking over the top. Could you kindly switch off your your mic? Just, just. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. Sorry, Peter. Just uh, put uh, your mic. Uh, can you switch your mic on? <laughs> uh, sorry. I have switched mic. Yeah. Yes. Could, could the person who is making, who is chatting in the background, please? Uh, no. Please. Uh, Stop so that we can have a response. Uh, it's coming from uh, East Africa, to what I heard. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, 
Okay, can we continue then, uh, Peter? Uh, Peter cannot uh, unmute. So, yes. So, go on, Peter. Sorry. You can unmute now. <laughs> okay. Hi, hi. Uh, um, yeah, I'm sick. It was still a lot of the interference in the background. I'm sorry. I don't know if anybody can hear me well enough. Um, okay, so then if I can just jump in there. I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, so I think uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Kawiche, Daniel Kawiche. Mr. Kawiche, so I, I will. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot uh, mute uh, Mr. Kayuche. Kayuche, if you can just put your mic off. Okay. Peter, please uh, go on, or uh, I can bring you also a, 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 a part of answer if needed for Mozambique. Yeah, question. I'll, I'll segue into you for sure because I think you're, but you know what? I think what you would want to do is, is that. Two things. Let me they answer that question in two parts. First of all, is that there's a real difference between sort of private standards and the import export uh, standards when it comes to food quality safety inspections. And so, one of the things you want to look at is sort of what's driving the private sector. So, the private sector not only has sort of the minimum requirements that it would be up, uh, you know, from, from a veterinarian certificate to safe for human consumption, but you want to be able to drive the industry forward and in looking at sort of like what is the underground realities of the private sector and what uh, quality do they have to perform, for instance, is there retailers that require a certain um, different level of, of bacteria compared to what is the standard international level. And so I think moving the, the, the sort of the standard operating procedures more towards practical everyday solutions on what would, what is the actual, you know, where are active country, uh, companies exporting currently? Where do they want to export? And then what are those requirements? So the competent authority is is proactive in in terms of sort of being the guiding light or the guide so that you you make the competent authority more of a reference source so that com companies can look towards exportation. Okay. And I and, and Philippe, you can Philippe, yes, I can I can go further because uh, the question is uh, how the competent authority institution in Mozambique uh, can deal with uh, enhance uh, safety and quality of agriculture and seafood product for the uh, to satisfy requirement uh, for export market, and I, I have to answer it's already the case. Uh, there is a very good uh, they, they they, there is a very good uh, competent authority. So it's uh, in it. Uh, I can see that uh, at the webinar right now, there is some uh, formal colleague of INIP which are connected. So uh, it's INIP is uh, Institut National de Inspection de Pescado, which is the competent authority of Mozambique. And Mozambique have already the authorization for export for Europe and for United States, which are, they are already doing for aquaculture products. So uh, to, to answer to the question, it already exists. And they are already uh, managing to, to put the standard, to control the standard, to, to comply to, inter to, to export requirement. Is that, 
Is there uh, other, other question? Uh, you are you are muted, um, Aubrey. If you can uh, activate your mic. Aubrey, you need to activate your mic. We cannot uh, hear you. Ah. Aubrey, we cannot hear you. Hello? Yes, now it's good. What is the financial viability growth rate for fish species oh. as compared to prawns, etc.? This is a, a general question from the group. Uh, a financial viability of growth rates for fish as compared to prawns. Well, bit of we a, have a bit of a general have, question for you. We are a bit uh, outside uh, food safety, except that uh, but it's one, one of the strengths of uh, all the Iora countries, uh, the climate, so good temperature. So uh, the animals are growing quick in comparison to other models of aquaculture in, uh, in, uh, in climate uh, uh, colder. Uh, it, so I will give uh, um, uh, an answer that will not be really precise because it depends which, level, which kind of uh, aquaculture you are doing, if they are intensive, extensive, and so on. More the animal are extensive, quicker the animal will grow. So less the, less the, if you concentrate the animal, you will reduce the growth rate. But uh, to give you an example, uh, the shrimp will grow, uh, it depends the species, it depends uh, the aquaculture level, but they, they, will, they will grow between uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 gram a week, and uh, the fish can grow 1.5 gram a day. Good. Um, thank you for that. It, um, we don't have any other questions. Perhaps you can move over to the other, some of the other um, questionnaires okay. that you had. Yeah. Okay. And after, just to finish the, the thing, the financial viability growth, it depends on the kind of product because the shrimp have a very high uh, market price. After the fish, it depends which, which kind of fish uh, you are selling. Uh, let's move to a um, uh, general question. Uh, just to, and after, after just, oh, sorry, here is it, I need to close. I have just, uh, to, just uh, to, to give the opportunity to, uh, to maybe answer, to answer some, some, some question like this, we can uh, gather your, your different um, uh, knowledge and uh, vision mainly not knowledge vision the way you see uh, the food safety aspect uh, so i will uh, um, oh, here is it so i will share my screen again if i can manage yes I will share screen again, and uh, it's the, we are going to use the same the same tool. So sorry about this, but it's, it was one not a simple tool to, to use uh, because we are we are above fifty participants. So if you look uh, if you look at the the document, uh, we have four questions. Same same thing. We are we are just uh, use uh, menti.com the same way, and. Um, and we are going to move quicker because now you are a bit used. The code is, I put it on the chat. It's a 5580, it's written on the top of the document, if you can see it. 55801892. And this is to describe what is food safety for you. So this is a good, uh, it's a good way to make a, a general uh, a general photo of this uh, webinar so because we will have all your 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 so i put the code uh we will have all all your um, your feedback of you the way you see food, food safety what come and the code 
code is, here is it. You have it on the chat if you need. Ah, sorry, I need to announce uh, voting. Voting, it's open now, sorry. I've opened voting. So just to describe in one word or two, two words, what is food safety? After all the presentation, I'm sure that uh, you will find a way to say that uh, that food safety for you, it's, uh, it's uh, maybe just uh, in one word export, as we say, uh, we saw. It, it can be hygiene, it can be uh, safe, it can be uh, health, quality, that's good, perfect. Exactly, what is food safety? So Menti, as is written on the top, so we have the word that will come, more there is participation, more they will have word that uh, So it can be, what are the consequences? What are the prerequisites? What are the output of food safety? You can... Uh, who? So it's health that come in safe and quality, which are the, the core. Hygiene a bit behind. So it's it just uh, to make a, a kind of competition with the last slide of uh, Dr. Sankar to try to to try to have uh, our own uh, own uh, slide presentation from the webinar. So we have 15 answer, which is good. It can be negative. Huh? If you can put constraint, uh, you can put uh, all. Uh, we're going to move after to the next question. Just to go quick and after because it's the end. It will be a good conclusion. This is for national food safety. For national food safety, or between all these sentences, do you agree or you don't disagree? You don't agree. You just have to move the, the to put a mark between one and five. You say, okay, national food safety, it's a direct responsibility of farmer and fish wholesaler. Yes or no? More food safety issue. There is more fish food, food safety issue in capture fishery than aquaculture. Government legislation and regulation. It's one of the main component of national uh, food safety. So there is not only farmer and fish uh, wholesaler responsibility. It's uh, it directly concerns the the competent authority. When you, you heard about national food safety, you think about laboratory, facility. Or you think about awareness. We are talking about national one, not for export. I see. It's always very interesting to to have uh, the feedback because you are you are all specialists and uh, in your field. I see that uh, sixty percent were from uh, government institution and thirty uh, percent were from private sector. So we have uh, both represented. So uh, I think it will impact uh, some of the question right now. And this is interesting to 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 have this feedback instead of having. Uh, 
having the feedback of uh, to having a feedback from uh, from far directly we we can have it i like uh, the 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 answer from capture fishery and aquaculture which is a bit more than the half to say that there is uh, there is more issue in capture <laughs> Just we are going to move to the la to to the next one. It's just to rank in your experience, and this is an important point as you are all specialists uh, in your field. It's uh, in national situation, and I insist in national situation because you will have similar question just after on export situation, and uh, it's to just to rank the hazard. Ah, uh, sorry, no, no, uh, yes, in your national situation. No, I I, I insist. Sorry, to export. What are the hazards that are important for food safety, for export? There is some that uh, that should less appear less than other one. And just to rank, what is the main the main uh, concern? I think we we. So just to have uh, some vote, then after, you are not obliged to rank the six of them. Huh? You can just rank the three first one. It's enough. After you go directly to the end and you say uh, to validate it, validate. Right. To find uh, viruses, parasites, and uh, parasite and toxin at uh, second place. It's interesting. Thank you. That's um, it. Thank you. Philippe. Yes. Can we? I, I give you the floor if you want to make a the the. Uh, the if we don't have other question, we can go for the evaluation. Yes, directly. we do have another question okay, here. Great. It says, um, uh, how should research be organized between private sector and government? That, for example, to conduct research to improve food safety in aquaculture. It's a, it's a question that comes from the Seychelles. Mm. How should research be organized, the split between private sector and government? For research in food safety and agriculture. So this is a good question because um, uh, for many countries, aquaculture is a new, new activity, uh, and uh, we have some good example in the Ayora country. What uh, what happened in uh, Madagascar, in Mozambique, for example? I'm talking about some case uh, where where I, I had to deal with where there was really a kind of connection uh, between private sector and government. And this uh, this uh, working hand uh, hand in hand for uh, sector development is always better. So my first answer will say to be organized first is to 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 let open all the cooperation uh, possibilities between uh, government and uh, and private sector. This is uh, the the first point. After there is some responsibility. And uh, you, we saw in the presentation that uh, food safety have some uh, responsibility uh, first in means and uh, in a result for the private sector and in uh, facilitation and control for the government. So the government also have a role of uh, support development of the, of the, of the sector. So, we can uh, we can be based on this responsibility in fact to make the chair because uh, we cannot put everything in hand of one of the actor as it's a cooperation food safety i we have dr sankar which is a uh, hand up that i think we can bring some additional uh, answer on the indian case 
because he's, it's really his field, research. Dr. Sankshah, can you help, please? He have a hand on. She's asking for the floor. Dr. Sankar? In my opinion, participatory mode of uh, research should be good so that both get the benefit. Okay, good. Okay. So basically, there's a role for both. Yes. Um, yes. There's a role for both uh, government and private sector. Um, I guess in due course that could be teased up. I guess it depends on the very specific situation of the country involved. Good. Thank you. Um, dear Philip. Uh, yes. And do you have the final question to be provided? In fact, the so first, uh, yes, is to, to thank you for all your participation. I will ask, ask you for a last, a last point, which is uh, to, to let us know how you, how was the, the webinar, how was the presentation? So this evaluation, uh, this evaluation part, I will share a last time my, my screen with this. Uh, I will let it active. So like this, you can, uh, you can uh, vote even uh, in 10 minutes. It's not a problem. So let me uh, share the screen. So like this, you can, um, some general question on the on the on the the webinar so to have oh, sorry to have your feedback uh on the evaluation so there is six questions that you can rank between uh, poor of you to excellent plenty so uh i will not uh, i will not induce uh uh the kind of voting but uh, the first question is quantity of information new information and useful information that you uh, you got from this so m as you are specialist there is maybe more useful than you new uh, general speaker knowledge of the topic general speaker presentation skill and animation how it uh, it was dynamic and uh, and presented general content of the slide how did the session uh, compared to your expectation because it's a webinar on a, on a broad subject so uh between your expectation and uh, what was the the result and a general mark of uh, overall session evaluation so uh between one which is poor to to uh excellent or plenty so i let you i let it open uh, no, sorry, you don't have access. I, I need to put access. Sorry, I need to move here. You don't have access. That's why there was no. Here is it. Now you can. So the code, I put it on the chat. The code, uh, it's again menti.com, the same. I'm doing a kind of advertising for menti.com today. Uh, there is other one. Huh? Uh, I activate the voting here. The voting is activate, activated, and uh, I put uh, the code everything on the chat. So again, uh, www.menti.com, and code is, and like this you can. The uh, five two seven eight zero four four three. Okay, if you have difficulties, just put on the chat. You can send in private to a bro to me. It's okay also. We will, uh, we will save the answer. So, um, thank you. Thank you very much. So, thank you very much all the participants who have taken part in this webinar. Uh, we hope it was interesting. Uh, thank you very much our team that have prepared for it. Um, just to let you know that uh, the responses of this webinar will be shaping a little bit some of the IORA AFD 
proposed activities to follow this up. As I mentioned, we wanted to do this as a, as, as a workshop. We have not taken this off the table yet, but it will shape a little bit the, the activities that we will follow up with the project. So thank you very much for your responses that you have provided. And I'd like to thank in particular the Iowa Secretariat that has supported this webinar throughout. Um, and perhaps, so I'd like to say, um, just say uh, thank you to everybody, but I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Gunawan for one last final word. Dr. Gunawan. Well, thank you, Aubrey. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, it's very, ex it's very excellent uh, webinar. Oh. And I wish that we will have another soon, right? Um, yes. So thank you also for the participants. Really uh, we yes. wish you also will be join us at uh, our future webinar with AFD. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Oh, I, I, I just stopped the, the screen sharing, but you can still continue to vote if you want. Thank you. Thank you. You have the access. Thank you very much.